not outside of a bar. However, officers say that's not where the crime was committed. Katrina Weber explains this news. New details in a stabbing investigation. What we know about the moments leading up to this altercation that left a man with a stab wound on the northwest side of town. The springtime sizzle that set in this weekend continues today. How close we could get to a record high temperature on this Monday and what the rest of the week has in store. Coming up. Live from Case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. New at noon, the San Antonio Police Department just releasing this surveillance video in connection with a murder investigation. Take a look at the screen. Police want to find this white four door car as well as the people who are standing near that vehicle. It's all part of the F to figure out who killed Quentin Smith. The SAPD says someone shot him in the parking lot at the Blow Hookah Lounge on West Avenue back on January 9th. Smith was taken to the University Hospital. He died from his injuries later on that morning. If you have any information, please call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. San Antonio police say robbery was the motive behind a shooting at a parking garage near downtown. The victim showing up at a nearby bar overnight looking for help. He told police three masked men shot him inside the garage at the corner of North Main and West Park Avenue, not far from San Antonio College. And as Katrina Weber reports, the building belongs to the Alamo College's district. At a time for last call at this bar north of downtown, San Antonio police and paramedics are answering a call about a shooting. Police say they found a 22 year old man outside the heat bar with a gunshot wound in his leg around 1:30 this morning. But he told them this area, the 1500 block of North Main, was not the actual scene of the crime. Officers quickly found it in a parking garage nearby. The victim and his friends say they were here when three men, all in black with masks, approached them and robbed them. Then they say one of them shot him. While the victim may have come here to park a car, police say it was his feet that helped him get away. They say he ran around the corner to the heat bar to call for help. Both sites are only about a block from San Antonio College. In fact, the logo and signs on the parking garage show it's owned by the Alamo College's district. Officers didn't say whether the victim might be a student, but they did say he should be okay. He's being treated at a hospital they are still looking for the gunman who got away. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We have some new details this noon in a stabbing investigation on the northwest side. Police say the victim a suspect got into a fight before the violent encounter. According to the officers, the victim called them and then told them someone had stabbed him in the abdomen. This was in the 1500 block of Hildebrand. However, first responders found the victim on Santa Monica. That's near I-10 in Fredericksburg road not too far so well rather so far police have not arrested anyone San Antonio police say a man was threatening a family member with a firearm before getting into a standoff with officers last night officers tell us they were called to a home off of west south cross between shelby and buffalo streets near leal middle school after six hours police say the man came out peacefully without incident a reminder, if anyone needs a place to get away from all the hot temperatures, the San Antonio City has opened up cooling centers. The city opening up additional cooling centers at senior centers. You can find a full list and a map on KSAT.com. And it looks like we're going to need them. Yes. Uh, this is a good reminder, uh, you know, before we start to get into our hot months, that if you have friends or neighbors that you know don't have AC um, check on them when it gets this hot because the heat can be dangerous uh, especially since it's so early in the year it uh, was a very hot weekend for us a record high temperature on Saturday we almost got there yesterday and we very well could have another record high today a uh, big factor here the cloud cover we had a lot of clouds this morning they're really breaking up very quickly as we head past the 12 o'clock hour here 87 at the airport already it's already 90 in New Braunfels 91 divine as you go west there's a bit more cloud cover from Eagle Pass up through Kinney County, Edwards County and Rock Springs. As a result, Rock Springs, you're still in the mid 70s. But as I put the satellite into a loop here, you can see that this cloud deck is really quickly shrinking in on itself. So 
We'll get you plenty of sun this afternoon in Rock Springs. Don't worry about that. Another unseasonably hot day for us. Here's how your high temperatures play out on this Monday. Upper 90s, a good bet in and around San Antonio, but south and west of Bear County. Wouldn't be surprised to see more triple digits on the board. If we can get up to 98 at the airport this afternoon, that would be a new record high temperature for today's date. The record as it stands currently, just 97 degrees. So very good chance we could break a record again today. We'll talk more about what the rest of the work and school week has in store coming up in the full forecast. David. Thank you. And now to the latest on Russia's war in Ukraine. President Vladimir Putin holding a massive ceremony in Russia's Red Square commemorating Victory Day, marking Russia's triumph over Nazi Germany in World War II. Putin used the celebration to try to justify his war against Ukraine. He didn't amp up his rhetoric about the war as some had feared. Meanwhile, ABC's Ike Joji tells us the U.S. is announcing new sanctions on Russia. Today, President Vladimir Putin, along with thousands, gathering in Russia's Red Square for Victory Day, a patriotic holiday commemorating Russia's victory over Nazi Germany in World War II. Putin using his speech to try to justify his attacks on Ukraine, saying that they're responding to NATO aggression and that they're fighting for the security of our homeland. Still, Putin didn't escalate his rhetoric as some experts feared, never formally declaring war, a victory in Ukraine, or even what his next plans are. He also chose not to threaten Western countries. Ukrainian President Zelensky countering Putin by releasing a video of him walking an empty barricaded street in Kyiv, saying we will not give anyone a single piece of our history. Zelensky also meeting virtually with the G7 leaders, including President Biden. The group announcing new sanctions on Russia, promising to cut off imports of Russian oil, sanctioning on Russian state TV networks, and imposing a ban on consulting and other services that support Russia's war. Elsewhere over the weekend, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden with a surprise Mother's Day visit to Ukraine. I thought it was important to show the Ukrainian people that this war has to stop. And this war has been brutal. That brutality ever present in the southeastern port city of Mariupol, where bombs continue to bombard the steel plant as the last Ukrainian troops are still holding out against Russian forces. So far, the Red Cross is reporting that over 600 civilians have been evacuated from that steel plant and the Mariupol area since May 1st. Now, altogether, the organization has helped facilitate the safe passage of more than 10,000 Ukrainian civilians from the region. Ike Ajaji, ABC News, Washington. Later on today, Governor Greg Abbott is set to visit San Antonio once again as he campaigns for governor. He's scheduled to be at the Pika Pika Plaza event center. It's at 6 o'clock. Democratic gubernatorial candidate Beto O'Rourke stopped by San Antonio last week. Also on KSAT.com, voters went to the polls this weekend. They approved the two biggest bond packages on the ballot, $1.2 billion for the city of San Antonio and $992 million for Northside ISD. And in several local cities, voters decided between mayoral candidates, one race still undecided, a runoff between Bill Warren and Claude Jordan Jr. will take place for Ingram mayor. Two constitutional amendments aiming to reduce property taxes were approved by a wide margin on Saturday. In Bear County, 91,656 votes were cast in total. That's 7.6% of the county's 1.2 million registered voters. You can get all the results on KSAT.com. If you're on the hunt for a new job, local hotels, restaurants, and entertainment venues, all of them are looking for workers. The city is going to be holding a hospitality job fair tomorrow at, Al at the Alamo Dome. It starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. It ends at 2 in the afternoon. More than 70 exhibitors from around the city are going to be there. It's a free event for job seekers. Employers are hiring at all levels. Still coming up this half hour, the NBA playoffs just took an interesting turn over the weekend, and we'll show you how coming up in sports. A local organization works to raise money to help fund other nonprofits projects. How some of that money is helping people in the community after the break. Impact San Antonio, a local women's nonprofit that helps to uh, orga various organizations all across the Alamo City. Now their goal is to join together to receive to achieve meaningful change. 
Max Massey gives us an inside look at Impact San Antonio and some of the people benefiting from its work. The pandemic has impacted students tremendously. Abigail is the executive director at City Year San Antonio, and her aim is to help students across our city. Educational equity needs to happen to ensure students can succeed, and City Year San Antonio helps to solve that problem. City Year is one of the organizations that Impact San Antonio just helped out with the grant. Anything that agencies are doing to help improve the opportunities for kids and also help them believe in themselves that's something we're definitely going to want to support, and it really is, you know, impactful. The group of women joined together to provide substantial help. It's really a great way for us to give back to the community. Over the last 14 years, Impact San Antonio has helped raise more than $4 million, helping nonprofits target a variety of issues. Big old goal is to have at least 500 memberships. That enables us to give a $100,000 grant in each of our five focus areas, and that's arts and culture, education, environment, recreation and preservation, family and health and wellness. When it comes to what causes to help out, Impact San Antonio is still accepting applications and they go through a thorough vetting process. As for City Year, they are working towards helping our next generation. When students graduate, that means that the city is stronger and better and that we can all be working together to create a brighter future. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. We're trying to figure out, yeah. did, you know, did we break another record on Sunday? We did not. Oh, well, we that's within, good news. <laughs> We came within one degree. Oh. And you wouldn't have been able to tell the difference. <laughs> no, because the humidity but was we, just as high. Yeah. We did on Saturday, though, right? Yes. New record high on Saturday. Came within one degree yesterday. And we could very well have a new record high today. So, yeah, the triple digit heat is starting early this year and it's going to be a very hot week. I'll show you your forecast coming up in just a few minutes. The aquifer is down four tenths of a foot on this Monday. We got the heat, we've got the humidity, but at least the pollen count looks good. Molds, grass and pecan are all low. We'll be right back. Dow Jones Industrial Average going down, the temperature Ooh. going yeah. up, going up. Not what we like to see. Mm. <laughs> Maybe we could get those. Could going. we? Yeah. Could we sw swap that? Otherwise. That's a lot of pain right there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Both ways. Uh, well, you know it was hot this weekend. If you spend any amount of time outside, you know that. But let's get you a little bit of context here. So check it out. Saturday, I have 101 at the airport. That was a new record. We almost got to record territory Sunday, but we missed it by one degree. Now, having two triple digit days in a row here this past weekend, that is now the earliest consecutive 100 degree day or instance of the uh, consecutive 100 degree days that we have recorded here in San Antonio. And that's since records started being kept, that's all the way back in 1885. Previously, the earliest point in any year that we had back to back triple digit days was May 11th and 12th of 1967. So the heat this weekend, it was significant. And just for kind of another perspective here, on average, we don't start to see our first triple digit days until late June, specifically around June 26th. So we're about a month and a half ahead of schedule there. So it was a very hot weekend. More records could be broken today. Across Texas, very quiet. A lot of the cloud cover has been around our area this morning, but it is quickly going away, and we've got a lot of sun coming this afternoon once again. The reason for the heat this weekend and today, heat high or a little ridge of high pressure has been centered off to our south and to our west over the past couple of days. That helps to maximize temperatures and also keeps rain out of the picture. This moves northeast over the next couple of days, brings some unseasonable warmth to parts of the Midwest, Great Lakes and uh, deep south there. So it kind of loosens its grip on us a bit. We get away from triple digit territory, but our high temperatures still mid to upper 90s all the way through the start of the upcoming weekend. And while we do get away from the triple digits, keep in mind our average high this time of year where we should be, if you want to think about it that way, is the mid 80s. So we'll continue to trend about 10 degrees above normal for this time of year. Already some 90s on the board. 90 New Braunfels, 93 Pleasanton, 94 Catula, 87 at the airport for now already up to 88 at Port SA, 
86 in Bandera and 89 in Hondo. So not only is it already getting hot, it is so humid. Our dew points are in the mid 70s in some cases. That's the top tier of our humidity tracker scale here. It's the uh, I, I ref recycled and refreshed a term. It's the air you can wear. May, have, I haven't said haven't said that one in a long time. Haven't heard it in a while. So bringing it back. It's the air you can wear. Just oppressive humidity. Uh, the clouds are going away. We've got some fair weather clouds and we could certainly hang on to a few of those through the afternoon. But generally speaking, sun is coming out. That helps to warm us up as we get into the second half of your Monday. Upper 90s, a good bet this afternoon. Again, if we can get up to 98 at the airport, that would be a new record high. Today's record is 97. We're going to go for another one today. Why not? Places like Castroville, Poteet, Pleasanton, Sabinal, Uvalde certainly could get to 100, maybe even 101 this afternoon, but it's going to feel hotter than that. This is the time of year now that we're starting to talk about the heat index or the feels like temperature. This is what it feels like to our bodies when you factor in the humidity around San Antonio. Look for the heat index this afternoon to peak between about 101, 106, but south and west, anywhere from Pleasanton down to Carrizo Springs, Catula, you all could see a heat index peak closer to 110 this afternoon. So if you work outdoors, please stay hydrated and please take breaks when you can. Our saving grace today is the wind, a steady breeze all day. Southeast winds 10 to 20 miles per hour, a few gusts up to 30 miles per hour at times. We'll just kind of keep the air you can wear moving just a little bit and we'll take that where we can get it again. Looking at a potentially record high temperature for your Monday. Plenty of sun this afternoon. Clouds fill back in before midnight. We'll start off with more morning clouds tomorrow afternoon sun and a late day rain chance on your Tuesday. We'll talk about that next half hour guys. I have an idea the air you can wear, especially in your hair. Yeah, we'll get shirts made. OK, <laughs> That'd be great. The best in the West is in a little trouble. We've got that coming up for you. And the San Antonio FC got burned again by Phoenix. Hey, still got a weird watch these other teams in the playoffs, isn't it? But the defending Western Conference champion Phoenix Suns are in a little bit of trouble with the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavs trying to tie up the Western Conference semifinals yesterday with game four win. First quarter, Darian Finney-Smith, the three. Dallas up at 11. They led 37 25 at the end of the first quarter. Then in the second, Spencer Dinwiddie finds former Spur Davis Breton straight away three. Mavs still up and in control 68 56 at half. Got to the fourth quarter, though. Devin Booker keeping the Suns in it with a three from the corner. He finished with a game high 35. But the big story was Chris Paul's foul trouble. He picked up his sixth right there with less than nine minutes left in regulation. Only posted five points in 23 minutes. The Mavs took advantage. They hit 20 three-pointers. Dallas wins at 111-101. Ties the series in two games apiece. All right, so here's a look at that one. Phoenix and Dallas now tied at 2-all. Game 5 coming up tomorrow night at 6.30. Golden State and Memphis will play tonight. See if the Warriors can get a commanding 3-1 lead in that one. Tip-off for that one is at 9 o'clock. Philadelphia trying to accomplish the same thing against the top seed in the Eastern Conference, the Miami Heat. Game four in Philly yesterday. Sixers center Joel Embiid wearing a mask for the second straight game. Didn't bother him too much. Hit the bucket for the two of his 15 in the first quarter. Philly up 30-28 after one. Home team finds some separation late in the quarter. James Harden drains a triple. Sixers lead 64-56 at half. Fourth quarter, Jimmy Butler trying to rally the Heat with a lay-in. He posted a game high 40, but the Sixers pull away late. First, Tyrese Maxey finds Tobias Harris. Nice alley-oop slam, 111-103 Philly. Then very next possession, Harden drains another step back three. He had 31. Philly has even the series at two games apiece with a 116-108 win. So here's a look at those matchups. We got Miami and Philly now tied at two. Tuesday, 6.30 is game five, and Milwaukee and Boston will play tonight, 6.30. Bucks lead that series two games to one. Sometimes the team just has your number. That describes Phoenix Rising FC. San Antonio has faced him twice this season, and both times a loss. Phoenix struck early Saturday night and led 2-0 by halftime. They added another goal after the break and won 3 nothing, despite San Antonio out shooting Phoenix. San Antonio suffers their first road loss of the season, but maintain their second place spot in the Western Conference. San Antonio will not face Phoenix again during the regular season, thank goodness. That was an incredibly difficult team. We know Phoenix is one of the best teams uh, in the league. You know, they, they took their opportunities well, scored some nice goals. 
That being said, we created a number of chances. Um, unfortunately, tonight we weren't clinical enough. Can't suck about that one because it's going to be a busy week for San Antonio FC. Three games in eight days, just like when they faced Austin FC in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Now it's time for the next round. San Antonio is going to be in Houston on Wednesday to take on the Houston Dynamo FC of Major League Soccer. This is the third time that SAFC makes the round of 32. Wednesday's game set for 730. And here's a look at San Antonio's next USL matchup. They will take on Miami FC Saturday at 6 o'clock. Very busy week. Yep. Gas prices have gone up again. It's more than 20 cents in the last week alone. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains what's causing this latest price hike and what you can expect in the coming weeks. It's your money, and we got you covered today on the News at 5. We want to bring you the latest in the battle over that leaked draft opinion showing the Supreme Court may be poised to overturn Roe v. Wade. Protesters from both sides of the abortion issue taking to the streets over the weekend. Also, Catholic churches across the country are on high security alert after calls for protests there by abortion rights supporters. ABC's Rena Roy has more. Coast to coast heightened security at Catholic churches as protests continue over the leaked draft opinion out of the Supreme Court, showing the majority of judges support overturning Roe v. Wade. Anti-abortion rights organizations also on high alert. This one in Wisconsin vandalized and set on fire. In a statement last week, the court saying the draft opinion, which suggests the conservative majority on the high court plans to overturn the landmark 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling, quote, does not represent a decision by the court or the final position of any member on the issues in the case. Still, protesters back in front of the U.S. Supreme Court also taking to the streets in California. Abortion is health care and... It's 2022. I can't believe we're having this conversation. And Texas. I do believe in the right to life, and I, I believe that this right to life is being denied. Democrats vowing to take action, hoping to codify federal abortion rights protections. The Senate is expected to vote on Wednesday, though the measure will almost certainly fail in the 50-50 divided chamber, where Democrats don't have the 60 votes needed to overcome a filibuster. If we are not successful, then we go to the ballot box. We march straight to the ballot box, and the women of this country and the men who stand with them will vote like they've never voted before. There is no right to an abortion in the United States Constitution. The reality is that when Roe was decided in 1972, when Casey was decided in 1993, uh, the judges simply got it wrong. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said a national ban on abortion could be possible if Republicans gain control of Congress. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, laws governing abortion will be left to the states. So far, at least 26 states are certain or likely to outlaw abortion entirely, though recent surveys show the majority of Americans support upholding the 50-year precedent. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. More pain at the pump. Gas prices are once again flirting with record highs. The national average for regular gas is now just over $4.30. That's according to AAA. Since the start of the year, gas prices have caused cost concerns for most Americans since demand has been outpacing supplies. And Russia's invasion of Ukraine made problems even worse, causing oil supply disruptions and pushing gas prices even higher. Tomorrow, President Joe Biden plans on addressing increasing criticism of his economic policies and the shocking rise in inflation. Last week, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates by a half point. The hope was to curb the worst inflation America has seen in 40 years. A CNN poll finds eight in 10 Americans believe the federal government has not done enough to curb it. The president says a top priority will be getting prices back under control and lowering costs for working families. As the midterm elections approach, President Biden is expected to use the opportunity to criticize GOP members of Congress. Biden believes so-called MAGA Republicans want to raise taxes on 75 million American families and cut programs like Social Security and Medicare. Extreme wildfire conditions have taken hold in several southwestern states, including New Mexico, parts of Colorado, and even here in Texas. Higher temperatures paired with bone dry air and strong mountain gusts are set to overlap for several days. It's part of a summer-like weather pattern that comes out with a chance of any meaningful rainfall. 
Those conditions are complicating the fight against wildfires that threaten thousands of homes in mountainous rural communities. More than 1,600 firefighters were out yesterday battling the two major blazes burning northeast of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Together, they cover 275 square miles, an area more than twice the size of Philadelphia. More than 20,000 structures remain threatened by the fire, which has destroyed about 300 residents over the past two weeks. Looking outside with live cam, not uh, fired uh, wildfires here, but certainly hot yeah. enough to cause one. And we can definitely sympathize with the lack of rainfall that they're dealing with there across the southwest. Uh, no, is no concerns with fire weather today. Big reason for that humidity is really high, but that means the heat index cranks up big time again this afternoon. Uh, let's take a look outside. We've had morning clouds, but they are quickly giving way to more sunshine than anything else. And that sun is starting to boost our temperatures here. 87 at the airport. Look at the wind though out of the south at 13 miles per hour. We are going to have a steady breeze all day long, and that's really going to help us out. Southeast winds 10 to 20 miles per hour through the afternoon and evening. A few gusts up to 25, 30 miles per hour uh, will help us out. That wind, you know, kind of keeps things moving and we'll need it. 98, your forecast air temperature today. That would be a new record high. But again, when you factor in the humidity, we're looking at heat index readings later on today, 101 to 106 around San Antonio, even higher down to the southwest of Bear County. Some good news here. Pollen count looks great. Great. Molds are low. Grass pecan are low as well. We'd like to see that oak is, I'm, I feel good saying oak is gone. It's been, it's not been in the pollen count for several days. So some good news there. The aquifer down four tenths of a foot today, 647.3. So we could use a little bit more rain. The next chance coming up is late in the day on Tuesday. It's all dependent on the dry line and storms that fire up in northern Mexico. I'll show you the severe weather risk for tomorrow and tomorrow's future cast coming up in just a bit. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Katie. As the nationwide baby formula shortage continues, more families are looking for other options. Now they're turning to sites like Instagram and eBay to get their babies what they need. These are your top headlines from Cheddar News. Meta opens their first brick and mortar retail store today. The store is located on Meta's Silicon Valley campus and it offers consumers a hands-on experience with Meta hardware before they purchase. Now Meta will be selling smart Ray-Ban glasses, portal video calling devices, and even an Oculus VR headset. Meanwhile, electricity providers in California, Texas, and Indiana now warning of an electricity shortage starting this summer. Officials say they lack capacity to keep electricity running through extreme heat waves and wildfires that are made more worrisome by efforts to transition to clean energy. Brownouts and rolling blackouts could be on the calendar if providers are unable to fill that gap. And Airbnb CEO Brian Chesky is saying that working in an office is, quote, an anachronistic form of work from a pre-digital age. His remarks come on the heels of Airbnb announcing that employees can work from home forever. Chesky cited the company's two most productive years ever and said that the talent pool had widened due to the remote work. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. The latest now on the nationwide formula shortage in six states, including here in Texas, more than half of baby formula supplies were completely sold out. ABC's Ariel Reshev has a look at how parents are coming together to help each other address the problem. Leslin Holub is a mom to three-month-old son, Jack. Hi. Born a preemie, Jack requires formula to supplement breast milk. We landed on Gerber Gentle Supreme. We never saw it in the stores, but it was in stock everywhere online. But three weeks later, Leslin says that online supply seemed to evaporate. So, of course, you know, panic set in. Leslin's alarm shared by new parents from coast to coast amid a deepening nationwide formula shortage fueled by supply chain issues and a major voluntary recall back in February of three popular brands manufactured by Abbott. Those products pulled following reports that four infants developed severe illness and two died. 
The company says after reviewing all data, it does not believe their facility is the likely source of infection. In April, 40 percent of the national baby formula inventory was out of stock. Leslin now trying a European brand for Baby Jack. And so we're slowly switching to that one. Um, so far, it's going OK. She's also relying on posts from Instagram pages like the Formula Mom for info about where to find supply. Some families also turning to sites like eBay, searching for what their babies need. One easy thing you can do is try to switch formulas, see if your child can tolerate that. If people out there are turning to the Internet auction sites or social media to get formula, you have to make sure that you're using an FDA approved formula. FDA approved to make sure that it is safe and it has the exact nutrient composition that young babies need. And that was ABC's Ariel Reshef reporting. Abbott Nutrition says that it is doing everything it can to address this infant formula shortage, including prioritizing production. But there is no clear timeline for when supply is going to be back to normal. And doctors say in the meantime, be sure to check with your pediatrician before switching formulas. They can help you find the best alternative for your baby. I think when you have to switch, sometimes it gives them a little tummy ache. But you're going to have to perhaps be patient. Just I'm, like we are. I was gonna say the weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we didn't. If you were, if you're a big fan of triple digit heat, you didn't have to be patient for very long because we did it this weekend. Uh, we'll make a run at the triple digits again this afternoon. 98, the forecast high. That would be a new record. And then mid 90s carry us through the end of the week. That's about 10 degrees above average for this time of year. Slim chance of a shower or storm late tomorrow. Forecast coming up after the break. KSAT 12 celebrates Military City USA, powered by USAA. San Antonio is known as Military City USA, where every enlisted Air Force recruit starts their basic training at Lackland Air Force Base. What's it feel like? Be it's eight weeks of training that transform a civilian into a United States Airman. And so this is where their, their Air Force career starts, and then it's also kind of the gateway into going further into their Air Force career. So they start here and they graduate here um, throughout basic training. They put blood, sweat, and tears onto all these drill pads, um, changed who they are as an individual to become a better individual here at Lackland Air Force Base. And on graduation day, just seeing how proud everyone in the stands is, how much taller they stand up on graduation day, how much taller you stand up as well. Just seeing that they they set their mind to something and they were able to accomplish it. And now they're going to go out and do amazing things for our Air Force. There's going to be another class of folks going through that. And they're going to be out on that tarmac and all that concrete. It's going to be hot. Lots training. of water for everybody. Yes. Uh, and electrolytes. Yes. Staying hydrated is key and, and start it early on in the day. If you've got to be before out, you're thirsty. Yes. If you've got to be out in the afternoon, start drinking that water first thing in the morning and that'll help you out. Here's a look at today's almanac. The morning low that in itself is something to behold. 76 our average low this time of year. Again, if you want to kind of think about it where we should start our days, 64. So well above average there and as you may have guessed, we're going for an above average afternoon high. In fact, I do think we could see a record high temperature this afternoon. The record for today is 97. I'm forecasting 98 for the airport this afternoon. 95, you're high in Bernie. 96, Bull Verde. 99, Stinson. Places like Pleasanton, Poteet, Castroville, Hondo could touch the triple digit mark again today. We've got abundant sunshine. Once again, there will be a few more clouds through the afternoon compared to what we saw in the afternoons this weekend. I mean, it was nothing but blue sky. We have started off with a bit more cloud cover this morning, so that'll leave a few fair weather clouds into the afternoon, but plenty of sunshine getting on through solar radiation to really warm things up. It's already 94 Stinson, also 94 Pleasanton, 90 in New Braunfels, 86 Bernie Stage, 82 Lost Maples dew points are still sky high where they were first thing this morning in oppressively muggy territory. Um, it is just sticky, sticky out there. Thankfully, 
We've got the breeze on our side. Southeast winds are keeping humidity high, but our wind speeds help to keep that hot, sticky air moving around just a bit better. And we'll hold on to a steady breeze for the rest of the day. Southeast winds will be at 10 to 20 miles per hour, gusting up to 25, 30 miles per hour at times through the afternoon and even into the evening hours. So that'll be around to help us out. We've also got several more breezy days this week. So as our high temperatures stay above average, each day we'll have a nice breeze to look forward to. Wind speeds start to drop off a bit toward the end of the week, but certainly through about Wednesday, our wind speeds 10 to 20 miles per hour each afternoon, so that will help us out. What would help us out more? is a chance of rain and unfortunately not much to see in that department over the next week. We do have a late day rain chance tomorrow and this will be due to the West Texas dry line setting up way off to our West tomorrow afternoon. This is expected to produce uh, some scattered severe thunderstorms from the Big Bend region up through Midland Odessa toward Lubbock and into parts of the Texas Panhandle. So storms are expected to develop in this darker red shaded region here and then move east. How far east they get that is the question and that is something that we'll have to monitor late in the day on Tuesday. There is the potential that some of the storms popping up across northern Mexico could actually affect the KSAT viewing area more than the dry line storms farther out to the west. So again, by about five o'clock tomorrow, We'll be closely watching any thunderstorm development west of Del Rio, west of Eagle Pass and the Rio Grande. Um, as we get past sunset, any activity that develops should start to fizzle out, but this thunderstorm activity will have time to make some eastward progress. So our far westernmost communities, Rock Springs, Brackettville, Eagle Pass, Del Rio, Comstock, you all have the best chance to see an isolated thunderstorm late in the day tomorrow. We'll have to watch the eastward progress for the San Antonio area and the I-35 corridor. So that's why I'm going to leave in a low chance of a late day shower or storm tomorrow. Don't hold your breath. We'll keep you updated. No rain in the forecast for your Monday. High temperatures are on their way into the 90s. We'll top out around 98 again. That would be a record high. Plenty of sun and a steady breeze. We're thankful for that. Late this evening by about midnight, cloud cover will start to build back in. We'll start you off with more clouds in the morning, but sun in the afternoon, and then monitoring that late day chance for a shower or storm. Guys. All righty, Katie, thank you. Welcome. Another Marvel movie dominating the box office this weekend. If this is your first appointment with Doctor Strange, you may want to prep a bit before entering the multiverse of madness, What you may need to watch before heading to see this one. The latest movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is the number one movie this weekend. CNN's Rick Damagella talked with Elizabeth Olsen about Doctor Strange and the multiverse of madness. You okay? Things get even stranger in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Wanda, what do you know about the multiverse? Viz had his theories. He believed it was dangerous. Elizabeth Olsen continues her WandaVision story arc in the film. It was kind of a big whirlwind, finishing WandaVision on a Wednesday and going to England on a Friday. Um, to quarantine, but then to make the then to make this film, you break the rules. Look out! I become a hero. I do it. I become the enemy. I do feel like it's it's just a great continuation. I've really loved being a part of this family. But you don't get to do this that often in this job. You get to be with a character for eight years, and so it's it's been an incredible journey. If this is your first appointment with Doctor Strange, you may want to prep a bit before entering the multiverse of madness. This is our home. The next fight for it. Most important is the Disney Plus series WandaVision. If you slept on this one, a binge before seeing the movie wouldn't be a bad thing. And while not as critical, a spin through the alternate realities of Marvel Studios' animated What If series wouldn't hurt either. Things just got out of hand. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. So you got to watch a lot of things before you watch that? Well, I, there's a, there's a pre-story, and the movie picks up later and you know character development all of that you might want to know what okay. everybody was doing before the movie started okay all right at least we know what these two are doing yeah they're handy 
making a mess. <laughs> Hopefully not making a mess around the house because it's our home improvement show today. That's right. And Mike has some hacks, right? Yeah, speaking about not making a mess, if you have to, we're gonna be, I'm gonna make sure you how to mount a, a hook in the wall right there, but if you're drilling into drywall, that is, can be a huge mess. Of course, the old hack is take a Ziploc bag, some painter's tape, put it right there, and when you drill then, this is gonna catch a lot of the dust in that little bag right there. Hopefully, you don't make as big of a mess. Oh, look at that. A little bit. But you're so neat. He's I always so be. neat and so organized. All right, and Stephanie Pena Frost from Princess and the Monkey Home Decor is here with some easy home improvement hacks that may make your life a little easier, like this one. And one of them, if you have some mismatched fleece socks, what's great is that you could use them on slippers to make reusable pads. I instead love that, of having to buy them all whether the time. they're the dry or you know the wet, the wet pads, ones, you know they can get expensive. So yeah, that's and a just great toss one. that in the washing machine. Toss there. it in the washing machine and then reuse it. All right, flawlessly functional. We're going to show you five great ideas getting your cooking space in order from the experts. Oh, nothing better than that. All right, and also give your backyard a little love with summer planting tips from Uprooted Gardens. Look at you go, you're everywhere. Oh no, that was from the experts, so they told me exactly <laughs> what to do. Wait till you see how they transform that, that one little corner of my backyard. That and a whole lot more coming up on this special edition of SA Live. Stick around. Right now on KSET.com, there's gonna be a total lunar eclipse this week and it's going to turn the moon red. On the night of May 15th and into the early morning hours of May 16th, the moon will enter the Earth's shadow, triggering a total lunar eclipse. That's according to space.com. Most of the U.S. will have a full view of the phenomena. What parts of the state will have the best view? Well, we can tell you. You just got to go to ksat.com. And we need to be updated on the sky conditions for that night because that's going to be key. Uh, based on what I was looking at this morning, looks like we could have pretty good viewing, but we'll keep you updated there. Otherwise, the heat is on unseasonably hot all week long, making run at a record high today. Breezy, though, for the next several days, that'll help us out. We'll keep an eye out west tomorrow evening for a few isolated showers and storms to try to rumble our way. Otherwise, rain, uh, any meaningful rain will be hard to come by over the next week, guys. Thank you. It, kind of tough in this weather, though, I'll say, to work yeah. outside on yeah. your garden. It is, but Mike was out there with a little water hose spraying it down. Yes. Did you have you ever used the baggy trick on like when if you want to drill into your No, but rock? I have cleaned up the mess from drilling holes <laughs> well, in my sheetrock, so I'm going to use that. You're going to have to watch and find out more tips from Mike and Fiona. SA Live starts right now. Today on SA Live, it's our home improvement show. We're going to show you some easy home improvement hacks that may make your life a little easier. Trendy transformation. On today's Happy Space, we reveal one family's master bathroom makeover. Need to hang something from a wall or ceiling? Well, these hooks with the toggle bolt on them are great if you're just going into drywall and tighten that up. However, what if you go into the wall and you hit a stud and got to get that into the wood? I'm going to show you an easy way to screw it in there. Did you get it? I think so. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Right. Now I'm good to go. You feel good? <laughs> I feel, feel good. good. <laughs> right. Hello and happy Home Improvement Monday. Good afternoon. I'm one of my ghosts, Rage. <laughs> and I'm Fiona Gorosiza. So because it's our Home Improvement Show, we want to know if you had an unlimited budget, mm. what would you remodel in your home? I mean, with an unlimited budget, if you, could, you weren't that happy, wouldn't you just go, you know what? I'm just gonna walk away. I'm gonna, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna buy exactly what I want. Unlimited budget, it's called, well, just keep that one wall there and you will replace everything else. Out. So, um, what would yours be? Oh, I'd put in a really awesome, like, infinity pool with rocks and a you know, waterfall. Just a really cool backyard oasis. That's Again, what I would I'd do. Probably what about you? Uh, the, the pool would be really nice, especially on a day like this. Right? So. I know. <laughs> But I mean, you know, kitchen, big bigger kitchen, all yeah. that, bigger master bath, so about everything. Yeah. Accord, again, new house. So uh, dream with us, let <laughs> us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and you might see your answer a little later in the show. And of course, today is all about your home, and first off, we're going to help you save money and time with a handful of hacks for keeping your home clean and organized without having to spend a lot of money, and in some cases, 
you spend zero. Zip nada! Yes. Our queen of the castle, Stephanie Pena Frost, owner of Princess and the Monkey Home Decor, is here to show us some of these clever yes. hacks. Yes. All right. Like Love them. Oh, these are so easy. Yeah, you know, are. when you think about them, you go, huh. Yeah. You know, all right, so what's the first so one? So the first one is um, your ironing board. Instead of having it behind, just like against the wall behind the door, why not take a door hanger mm -hmm. uh, over the over the door hook and then you just take your ironing board and you place it right on it and there you go or if you have some leftover uh, wreath hangers yeah. you can put those on your door as well on the behind the door and it works perfectly it's the perfect amount of weight to hold these it's great tip that would be fantastic and if it's the over door you don't have to you know put any screws in there yeah. or anything exactly. like you that don't have at to do all, any so. on, on the wall so if you're in an apartment or you're renting it's a great idea that way you're not damaging anything right. love now, that and to the then laundry room the laundry room you're already in your laundry room with mm -hmm. the ironing board Dryer balls. These are the best thing for the, the Texas weather with the static, how static is all, always notoriously bad. There's, throw these in your dryer and it helps pull all that static from your clothes. It's really a cool trick and it helps like keep your clothes nice and crisp. And So you just need yeah. one? One, just two, one yeah. Never just to do that. You can just use it over and over again. Just over and over again. You can use it like three or four times and it okay. works perfectly. Okay. Unlike a dryer and it, sheet where it's kind of one and done. One most and of done. The time, so. And it doesn't destroy your dryer. So you're good with this. It's a ah. nice, easy. Okay. Okay. Jewelry, I know, can be, I mean, little chains and everything like that can just make a mess. It, in, you know. in your bathroom or in your, in, in, your, in your bedroom, you can have jewelry everywhere. I lose jewelry all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, these are some cool, fun things that I have found that work g great. One is a, a frame that I picked up at, at a, at a um, hobby store and it was a damaged one. I paid $5 mm -hmm. for this frame. Doesn't matter if it's all banged up. And then I used some tree branches from outside and made fun uh, jewelry hangers for it. And the other one is a, a desk drawer, utility drawer organizer with okay. command hooks. And you just so put pencils in and everything like that. And so all you've done is take, again, these little command which you can get anywhere and they've got the, the stick -em on them. Yes. And you put some, whoops, that one fell off, but uh, you put some across the top. The hardest part is just getting the little uh, peeling off the back right there. And then some across the side and this could be for, like you said, like you've shown right there. So well, earrings. Earrings, because just stretch a piece of twine or uh, a little chain or something right across there, and that's where you can hang your earrings, and then in there you can just hang the, the chains and necklaces, so just like this. And you can lean it up against, against your wall, on your bathroom cabinet, and it works perfectly. It's a great idea, and if you need to mount it to something, just pop a couple of screws right in there, Simple and there you go. Be. It's simple as can be. And these it, things are really inexpensive too. And you can use plastic ones. You can use wood ones. It doesn't matter. Kind of whatever you have. Right. Okay. okay. And then so this oh, one. So for here. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. So you kind of saw the finished product there on the screen, but you pre-drill, you, you know, some holes, you right? You pre-drill a hole that's larger than the screw. That way, it keeps it from splitting the the piece of wood while you're drilling it in. Okay. And then, of course, I drilled some pilot holes, and then you just take the screws and you adjust them into the holes, and... Other way. You are good to Come go. <laughs> flip, flip that I think like you that. pranked yeah. her. Okay. There, go ahead. Really? Go. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you yeah. sure? It's going to be right there. There you go. Wait, hold on, wait. You got it. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Go. Yay! Okay, so you just do that you do all the way sides. around, and then you can just hang your necklaces. You can hang your necklaces, Yay. and it, it's a fun. It's different. It's yeah. something reuse. If you have, like I said, if you have an old frame that that's broken, you broke the glass. It's a great way to reuse that. And I love with the branches on there. Just give that a uh, little fun look. Exactly. Kind of look. Now we're getting to the flip flops, and these things are great. They can cost what a dollar, something like that, maybe for the and beach. A quarter. But you can lose them. Where do you find them? Do you, mm -hmm. you know stick them in a whatever? They're all over the place. They're all over. This is a great idea. You're right. The the file folder, mail holder mm -hmm. thingies. I, get, I buy a bunch of these all year, all summer long for the kids and just throw them in there. And then when they need them, they pull them out, they put them back in there. It reduces the amount of dirt that they come in with. And if you're at the beach, it's great to have that. And the, it stands up. They're not falling over. They're not And that's going to catch all the sand from It'll the beach, too. It'll catch all the sand. Yes, it definitely okay. does. All right. I love this for your pantry. Oh, yes. Okay. This is a great idea. It is. So it's one of the shoe, shoe holder racks, mm -hmm. right? 
and you put it in your pantry door and you fill it with all the different things that your kids are going to want and need over the summer from snacks I have playing cards I have first aid kits I have healthy snacks you could do breakfast lunch and dinner you could do days of the week you could do anything you want and from the small to the big I put the I found this the shoe hanger with some really big openings at the bottom, so it's perfect for the big bags of chips. Or even if you want to do uh, the little boxes of the Ziploc baggies, yes. open up the end of them, stick them in there. For exactly. That, so. It makes it so much easier to organize. Great way to hang jeans, get one of these wire racks, and these are shower curtain uh, hooks, and you can just take that and put it right over a belt loop. And if it's for kids in the closet, you can put those on the bottom rack, shirts up there, you can adjust it. And that's a great way. I mean, they'll all just kind of hang right up there. You don't have to worry about the hangers and all that stuff there. I love I like it. Okay. okay. And just, real quickly, if you missed yes. it earlier, you know, when you have a Swifter and you have to buy the dry pads or those wet pads, it can get expensive. They're so, so expensive. If you so, have. So how many times do you ever lose socks? Mm -hmm. the, the sock yep. thief comes and takes them. Don't throw the fuzzy ones away because you could take these and use them on your Swiffer. You just pull it over. You want to get it up in there nice and snug. Pull the end over and, and there you right. go. Fantastic. All right. And then you just wash them. I love it. Great, ideas. great. Thank you so much. Stephanie Pena Frost from Princess and the Monkey. For more information, all you have to do is head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab or just snap that QR code on your screen. She'll also be at the Bloom Handmade Market this Saturday, May 14th, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the San Antonio Shrine Auditorium. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great hacks. A lot don't cost anything. All right. You know, San Antonio is full of so many wonderful interior designers, and today we tag along with Cami Malaga from CM Interiors to see something we all wish for, a master bathroom makeover. Oh, uh, yes. Our Jen Tobias Strusky takes us there to see what's on the wish list for this northeast side home. Renovating a restroom in your home can make a huge difference. After all, it's the area you get ready in the morning and the place where you wind down at night. Today, Cami Malaga with CM Interiors is teaming up with KJ Works to create a master bedroom restroom oasis for a family on the northeast side of town. Let's see what the plan is. We are in the uh, Stone Oak area at my client's home. We've been working for almost two years now at um, pretty much every space in the home. We've redecorated most. We did a gut remodel in the kitchen, just mostly for uh, efficiency, um, but also cosmetics, um, and it's beautiful. And now we're moving on to the primary bathroom. My client loves light and bright and she loves all things pink and gold and and now you know it's it's dark and it's brown and um, so we intend to replace all of the tile with some light beautiful classic timeless marble beautiful applied molding on the walls it, it's an easy way to add architectural interest in the bathroom and make it feel special we'll add a chandelier above the tub and um, I mean it's a beautiful moment a large scale chandelier above the bathtub we'll remove all the tile and it'll just be a freestanding tub um, no jets it'll free up some space right here I think we've got like 12 inches all the way around so it's a little tight when she's got her little kids in here her big kids in here and some more cosmetic updates we'll do some large framed mirrors um, that will you know uh, accentuate the tall ceilings in there. The arches go throughout the home, so we're gonna add some arches to the top of the mirrors. And then we'll do some sconce lighting in between those mirrors there. The light is really nice to have. It casts an even light on your face when you're getting ready. We're working with KJ Works, Justin Corb and team, and they are fantastic. They've got everything in house. They make their own cabinetry, which makes it really seamless and, and a, a nice process. So this is Justin, KJ Works. Hi. This is Eddie also. This is the team we talked about earlier. These guys are awesome. They've got their, um, everybody's in house. Yeah, so one of the more complicated things on this project is we do have a curved wall. Right now they have it built around this rounded tub, but we're gonna switch that out to a freestanding tub. And we're gonna end up putting our plumbing here in the wall, so we'll have our faucet coming out of the wall. On the back wall here on this curved side, we're gonna have to uh, have a little bit of a challenge when we come back with our, with our wainscot molding to bend it into the wall. So that'll be one of the harder things on the job, but we're up for a challenge to, uh, to take care of that. So today's demo day, so we're prepping out there. We're gonna come in and tear this thing out and start it over. <laughs> start it over, make it pretty. Best part? What do you like best about the process? Finishing. <laughs> uh, final check? Yeah, final check. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
check. I love no, honesty. Demo day is fun. When the client walks in here and it's you know it's bright and light and matches the rest of the house, everything is cohesive. That's that's it for me. That's pretty amazing. Don't go anywhere. Later in the show, the big reveal of this brand new restroom. We find out if it's one client's new happy space. Still ahead on SA Live, from the bathroom to the kitchen, we're showing you five great ideas for getting your cooking space in order. But first, need to hang something from your walls? Gonna show you how to do it with ease without having to hire a handyman. That's next on SA Live's Home Improvement Show.